lovelies, and this is my recording for the July Character Randomizer stream, Superheroes and Villains. Um, the name of my character is Nasso Glow, dark blue skin, uh, hair, none. Um, she appears to be hairless due to her helmet. Height, tiny. Weight, heavy. But that's because she's denser than normal humans. Inventory or inventor is her job and her talent or hobby is woodworking. Her power is a light sniffer, which I used to between her inventive abilities and technology. Um, she's basically snuffing out um, a solar flare. So yeah, uh, her banes are glitter and sneezing and her dilemma is the sun is dying. The reward for success is lives in contentment. The Glitter Bringer. Teacher, tell us the story about the Glitter Bringer, Trogi begged. The six cycle olds gathered and blinked large olive colored eyes at Kello, pressing together to hear the story of the savior of their people. Kello sighed, preparing to repeat the story that gave all hope, but Kello was one of the few who knew the truth. Their parent, Kalako Mafi, had been the one to cause the catastrophe of the burning sky and the sickened sun. The dark glitter released by the one who traveled saved them all. Kello knew things no one else in their population knew and why the Glitterbringer had done all they could to protect them. Ten cycles ago, the world burned, and then almost burned again. But the Glitterbringer sacrificed everything to save a few. Once, the people lived and wasted and polluted and paid no he heed to the things they harmed. The taint of the land and air began to sicken the people, so those who ruled in the council chose to listen to one who wished to expand their prestige. The golden, taupe-eyed Kello gestured while speaking, using the moniker they gave their own parent after they vowed the name would be stricken from memory. The selfish one promised to send all the waste away to the sun. The selfish one used the information tellers to spread the lies that it would be safe to bundle all the wasted things together and send the bundles to the sun because the sun was simply a large fire and the people have always used fire to make things into ash. Patkey asked timidly, And they sent the bundles to the sun in the towers? Yes, the selfish one learned from a greedy traveler about how to build the towers and remove the magic ore. They made others believe the fire the towers expelled as they flew to the sun would purge the air of poisons while they carried away the waste bundles and magic ore. They thought the towers would make the world clean again. At first, it was fine but it did not stay that way. Kello's three fingers waved, imitating the towers launching into space. Some towers exploded, like a pea pod contaminated with fungus. Some fell to the land like a handful of gravel tossed in the air. Most made it, so no one complained. Every day, tower after tower was launched and the air became more and more acrid with every cycle. We did not know the flame from the towers wasn't cleaning the air, but polluting it. Or that the towers, full of discarded waste, were making the sun sick. Kello hated the lie that was now part of their history, but told it anyway. Their leaders were made aware by the scientists of the travelers that they should stop before something catastrophic happened. Kello remembered the day Nasso Glow stormed out of a meeting with the council 
and Calaco. The blue-skinned, hairless traveler fidgeted in annoyance with their eye covering, then clenched their fist. Nasso muttered that the council were fools, then stopped, noticing young Kelo, and smiled behind the strange, fear clear face guard all travelers wore. Hello, friend Kello. Friend Nasso, are you angry with my parent? Kello worried about losing the friendship of the most interesting person they encountered. I am worried. Your parent is hiding things from the council, things that could have dire consequences, Nasso revealed, then took a small round orb from a uniform pocket. Listen to me carefully. You and the other young ones are a treasure. If there is danger, I will warn you. Never be without this. It will protect you if we are not together. I promise to keep it close. Learn from my people's mistakes. Don't repeat them. Nasso's skin felt strange and smooth when it touched Kello's skin in a gesture called a hug. But Kello could sense Nasso's worry, thinking about the truth the short, blue-skinned traveler had shared. Teacher Kello, finish the story, Nakna begged. The smallest of the six cycle olds implored with eyes that were more gray than green. They cradled the flower-carved fine wood Nasso made for Kello before they left. Yes, the story. Where was I? Kello blinked away the memories. The little ones all answered at once. The towers! The towers made the sun sick, and the sick air made the people sick. Ah, yes, the air became acrid and the sun became sick. The travelers came back and tried to warn us to stop. One named Nasso Glow worried for our people and warned the council that the towers were harming our world and our star. But the selfish one convinced many that the travelers were not to be trusted because they lived separately and differently. Their ways were not our ways. Then the sun belched. Our people were lucky because the fiery gas moved toward us it was only a small line of embers, but it ruined many powered things and made the sky glow in red vines for many dark cycles until they became known as the Red Sleeps. The youngest ones quivered in terror and the older ones twitched with excitement. And we still has the Red Sleeps? Yes, because we made our son sick. We still have the red sleeps sometimes. The corners of Kello's mouth turned down, but the story continued. The selfish one did not listen to Nasso Glow, and the people liked that they could just send the waste away in the towers. They kept sending the towers, but the air had gotten so sick that one day everything changed. As the one now called the Tower of Consequences flew away, the whole sky caught fire and burned. But the orb saved you, Troki insisted as the others nodded. Yes, the orb saved me and all of your parents. Nasso's gift to my generation was the 400 orbs. They turned into bubbles and surrounded everyone she gave them to. The Tower of Consequences tumbled into the sun. It gashed a wound into the sun's skin, so the fiery blood of the sun followed the tower's smoke back toward our world. Desperate to save everyone, Nasso Glow turned her sky home into glitter. Kello was interrupted by Tiny Nakna. The glitter, you saw it, you touched it. Kalo remembered the day well. Yes, once Nasso and I were walking and looking at the latke blossoms, but the sick air had made the stone shelf of the path weak and it fell. 
Nasso saved me, but tore her blue skin on the rocks as we rolled. Nasso coughed and sneezed. I thought they would die. Then Nasso gave me a different tube, gesturing that I should pour the dark glitter onto the injuries. It was soft and hard at the same time. The glitter sparkled and moved as it healed her blue skin. It was an amazing adventure. Invention. And because of it, Nasso lived that day to save us all later. Finish the story, Troki complained impatiently. Kella fondly patted the young one on the head. Very well. Nasso turned her sky home into glitter and made a great shadow between our world and the vines of the sun's blood flowing toward us. The bubbles brought all who yet lived together, and her land home became the shape of a latke leaf. It covered the valley in a thin shadow, and as the glitter beyond the sky kept the sun's blood from touching our world, the glitter protected us, and Nasso Glow became known as the Glitter Bringer. Teacher Kello? Patke asked, a question none had dared ask. What happened to the Glitter Bringer? Kello smiled sadly and admitted, like all travelers, the Glitter Bringer traveled back home, but they left the glitter in the sky to protect us against the time when the bad travelers returned. Kello assured them, Nasso asked us to restore our world after they left and promised to return. And that is why we no longer waste things, Troki announced firmly. Waste makes our world sick, and feeding our waste to the sun made it sick, so we cannot do it again. Reclaim, reuse, recycle. Tla and Lolo chanted together. And, Kello prompted, And do not trust the bad travelers who want to dig the magic ore, Natka responded. We work to make our world healthy again, Patkey answered after her. Very good, little ones. Kello tipped their head from side to side in approval. The glitter bringer is the best friend our people will ever have. The little ones repeated the phrase, then they all froze and faded away. Protector Nasso Glow turned to face the quorum of fleet commanding admirals, galactic union legal enforcers, and corporate representative. And that is my defense for creating a great filter paradox. The Clint Gates group violated every restrictions of Clark's laws by showing Calico, Calaco Mafi how to build rockets and bribing it to mine Q ore with the lie that the ore was part of what was poisoning their planet. That was last season. She swiped the display showing multiple planetary surveys. Here is the documentation of the environmental damage caused by Clint Gates interference since my parents discovered this species. They weren't just blasting their trash into their sun at the suggestion of off-worlders. They were sending rockets filled with Q ore into space for privateer mining trawlers to retrieve. Clint Gates privateer mining trawlers. And the trawler number 5P3CTR missed its hyperlink light trans transition due to an engine coupler failure. The lawyer from the third largest corporation in the Galactic Union slammed his hand on the table, interrupting. They mined it themselves. They built and launched the rockets themselves. We aren't responsible that they were destroying their environment. We were just picking up their trash. Oh, really? The offspring of Kalako Mafi remembers it differently. Nasso swiped to another recording, which showed Kello talking about her parents' 
many meetings with the Klingate's representative and even images of the human male in his blueskin spacesuit in their home. The point of exit of Trawler 5P3CTR was directly in the path of a rocket four times the size of the old Saturn or Titan ones and filled with Q ore. Because the profiteers were not there to snatch the rocket and leave, that payload hit their G4 star, causing a massive explosion and flare which would have made them extinct. NASA swiped to a list of ships and shipments. Klingates is not mining the asteroid belt. There is no Q ore in the asteroids, and they have not brought a shipment back from the system since the disaster five standard units ago, because I set my nanite bots to depower any ship that tries to land on that world. She glared at the representative, which is why your company has to keep sending tow ships there. I won't let you cause an extinction level event, and I won't let you strip mine a sentient populated world. The laws enforcing the protection of Fermi paradox species are very clear. I demand protection for them. It will take them three generations to recover to only 1% of their previous population. If every one of their people bears four offsprings and sires four offsprings. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, Protector Glau. We will discuss this matter and the enforcement of the law, a legal enforcer stated. Quorum, I volunteer to return and take the commission as a Fermi ambassador, NASA volunteered. There was a shocked murmur. It is a lifespan appointment. You will spend the entire time in a nanite blue suit. I'm aware, Nato said, Na Naso said, as she held up her chin. The glows cannot be bribed into neglecting our duty. My parents taught us that every sentient life is sacred, except corporate lawyers and profiteers. Sneering at the corporate representatives, she turned and walked out of the hearing proudly. Her brother was waiting. So, are you a super hero or a super villain? We'll see how the vote goes. Did you find Mum and Dad's ninth, ninth Fermi? There were nine sentient species their parents discovered and protected from the profiteers for decades. Genetically engineered to be sturdier and more long life than normal humans, the ten siblings carried on their parents' legacy proudly. Hilo Glow scowled. Yes, it is exactly where they said it would be. But they're having a war using Klingate's Sonic's weapons, no less. Nasso shook her head. Someday the Galactic Union is going to have to do more than slap Klingate's group on the helmet. I agree. My report hearing is after you. Yours. I'm requesting the same commission rank as you. I had gills implanted so I won't almost drown again if my helmet cracks or my blue suit gets torn. Hilo rubbed his neck as they waited in silence. I'm proud of you, little brother, Nasso murmured. And I, you, twin sister, Hilo responded. Four day cycles later, Nasso Glow said a final goodbye to her brother. She sent a quantum relay message to, her, to their siblings, who were already living as Fermi ambassadors, protecting the sentience their parents once protected. After receiving a new blue suit, she relaxed into the control pod of her new ship. It was a risk because she violently reacted to the non-activated nanite dust. But her glitter allergy was worth it to save her friend's people. She rubbed her hand over the blue suit covering her head. Ship, send a QR message to Calm Orb 1414. Record. Greetings, Kello Mafi. This is Nasso Glow. We did it. 
I am coming home for the duration of my life. I cannot wait to see the Lotke blooming again. End recording. Send. Thank you for listening to the story created from the Character Randomizer July Superheroes stream. I hope you enjoyed it. Be blessed and have a lovely day.